Welcome back, and uh, uh, I was able to change the batch RC so that I can put uh, my username and the password of uh, my MySQL uh, server in that batch RC as an environment variable. By the way, and it's not recommended to put your password in there as a planned text. Uh, we are doing a tutorial, and we are so it's okay, and I will remove that later. Okay, let's first test it. If my uh, I can connect it to my SQL. Okay, it's there, and uh, I need to see whether I have my database in there or not. Okay, okay, I already created this uh domain test, so I'm I'm fine. I'm I'm good. So let me exit, and now I have my SQL. Okay, not in there yet. Okay. So I will go ahead and run that particular um, SQL file, which as we showed before, what we do is we create this table and insert something in there. Okay, and just Without logging in there, I just want to if I able to get all that information in there, whether I created a table and uh, uh, insert all the 30 rows successful or not. Okay, so we have it. So now it's good. And I have all this one, and uh, I will go ahead run that particular application, Java, write this, cache. Okay, so here we know that we are able to connect the Redis server already, and also we here need to ask for SQL query. Here we have to, we will ask for a query, which is to get uh, what's in that row for that particular day, the, the the first day of the nineteen ninety nine. Okay, we got the result, and that result is come from my SQL. And I do run the very same query again, and that result come from the Redis cache already. So cool. And I'm keep talking, keep talking. I hopefully I will already talk for more than ten seconds. Yes, I did. So the result come from my SQL again. Cash again. So now I will demonstrate this. I will do something similar. I will get the same result. However, this time I use the year and date, which is not the same as the period uh, uh, SQL statement. So that it's in our cache. So you get the result from uh, my SQL instead of cash from the uh, Redis. Okay. So we will run a couple other things. As simple as this, this query, because the query as a string, so we didn't do anything fancy, but the string, if the string not match, which is not, it will go directly from my SQL, and this is to count how many times this counting when they throw spoken, which is straight or know it. Do again, so come from the Reddit cache. As you can see, this time, so before is the point select. So sometimes the cache may not really work that much because we already will have a result cache in my SQL cache layer. However, we do a count star with aggregated. That can take a much more longer computation and may need to retrieve all the data from my SQL. So the result, if we got a result and the cache in the Redis cache, we don't have to go to MySQL and do the all computation anymore. So that's the big step here. Okay, already more than 10 seconds, I believe. I have to do it again. Yes. But now you need a cache. And let's see how many times. The top winner. So this query, if you have, imagine you have millions of 
hundreds of million rows. This query, which is do a group by and order by to find the top winners, how many times they win a rose ball. Uh, assume we have you know, one rose ball for hundreds of million years. This can be a very heavy computation. And the first time we run it, we have to go through MySQL. But the second time, we go to the Reddit cache. So that's the whole purpose of Reddit cache. And we just demonstrate how this code should be right. And this, by the way, is read only at this moment. And uh, maybe for the next episode, we'll talk about how to read and write. Great. Cool. So to close out this episode, we'll go to the very last page of my presentation. This is the code. And for the Redis, there's a many deployment options. And uh, there can be a single Redis and it can be a cluster. Cluster actually using a shard kind of an environment so that it can kind of scale out kind of things so we can serve more concurrency connections. And at the same time, to for high availability, we can have master and slave. And also we can have master and slave with read and write split. So that's all kind of different deployment options that can be provided, currently provided by uh, Alibaba Cloud. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.